Hi everybody and welcome to uh, what I believe is some kind of desktop tour or like UI or setup or I think workflow tour of, of, of the Denshi video YouTube channel or at least my personal desktop. I, I have uh, KDE Plasma as my desktop environment on Manjaro KDE which comes pre-installed with KDE Plasma. I use uh, various programs, most of which I detail, pretty much all of which I detail in my Just Use series, so obviously OBS, Resolve, Audacity, not Steam, but uh, Krita and such. Uh, they're all really good softwares, um, obviously, and um, today I'm going to be showing you basically my setup, not in terms of how to use these softwares, I already made a, like a 40 minute long video on that. Um, instead, this is a setup like, this is like showing how I have the UI set up, what plugins I use. I, I try to avoid using plugins in software, like I only really use uh, plugins in OBS and the KDE. That's pretty much it, and the only KDE plugin I really have is like the theme, all of these things, and also this audio spectrum visualizer, all of these things besides the audio spectrum are all stock. So, uh, first thing I'll take a look at is exactly that, my, my KDE like desktop setup. So I have a, this isn't actually a dock, this isn't like a latte dock, because latte dock uses tons of resources. Do not use latte dock unless you really, really want latte dock and you don't care about your RAM. Um, this is actually uh, not latte dock, this is a panel. KDE Plasma, see it's 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 panel, so you can right click on it, edit panel, it's, it's a panel. Um, what it is, it's just a, a panel and I made it really tall, so I increased the height a lot and I just got a panel from there, just putting it back. I made it like restricted, I made it so it, it goes down every time I'm not using it. So you know, as you can see I can go here and then it goes away, like that. It's like a kind of like a dock, and that's, that's pretty cool. Exactly the same as a latte dock, but you know, doesn't use like a million billion gigabytes of memory. I have my weather over here. Yes, I live in the United Arab Emirates. Not like that's not literally been revealed due to the fact that my channel's location is set to that. A CPU load monitor, got my hard disk IO over here. Got my audio spectrum visualizer. I have this set to desktop audio, although if I wanted to, I can go here and configure it so it uh, just takes um, just a built in this one. So, as you can see now, I'm talking and it's just using the actual microphone's input. I'll keep it that way for the rest of the video because it looks cool <laughs> having this little audio like visualizer. Uh, this instead, this is a network monitor. This is basically just, uh, you know, my use of network. This is my memory, how much memory I'm using. That, that's it in terms of these widgets over here. Got my folders. The way I make my videos is I have a project data Q and a project data S folder. So this is project data Q. I have all, oh, look at this, spoilers. I have uh, all my videos I'm working on here. And uh, each one gets its own folder, unless it's just like an assets. Like for example, I've got a funny intro here. Got like uh, Pippi the Movie 2 review coming up soon, hopefully with comms. Got, still got my MLAZR stuff. Um, just use bone marrow. That should be deleted. I already finished that video. I already, I always delete stuff when I, when I'm done with the video because keeping project files like they, they occupy quite a lot of space. I use Mega to back stuff up. So as you can see, I use Mega. It's, it's a very useful like um, backup utility mostly because it, it's, it's, it's far more secure probably than, than Google Drive. It's probably far more private. Actually, you know, cares about stuff. It's actually good. Yeah. Um, so all my videos just get their own dedicated folders. I just put stuff in here. And uh, yeah, this applies to pretty much all my YouTube channels. I have some kind of like a uh, folder set up specifically for that channel. So I would have a project data queue folder. This is only really, this is for all my videos on all the channels. And then I, what I would do is I would have a specific a folder dedicated to a specific channel. So Denshi Video gets its own folder in the folder itself, all the assets I use. Then there's like specific folders for specific things that are loads, like thumbnails. This is every single thumbnail of all my videos ever. Um, Unused branding, old branding that I don't use anymore. Uh, Denshi is Denshi, like the actual icons, effects. So these are all the audio effects that I use. Music that I use in my video, all Heinz Kiesling, you know, Mod Stein, the uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia music. Scripts. I don't really write many of these. Um, most of these uh, are like already done videos or videos I'm working on. This is actually a really long script I wrote quite a while back. I actually recorded it and deleted the recording because I, I didn't feel it was a uh, it felt like a really long video. I'll make that one later. Anyway, so I have all my, you know, got all my uh, stuff that I need for actual channel stuff here. I got a weird screenshot for some reason. Uh, Discord screenshots. Uh, that, that's that's pretty much it in terms of Denshi video. Denshi song, which is the the alt account for only music. I keep all the assets here. Got I got a folder dedicated to uh, each like kind of quote unquote 
album or like playlist I have on the channel. So for example, um, this over here called Singles is actually the Virtual Singer Covers, uh, the first edition. This is Minstrel Wave is another playlist on that channel. Musical Fix is just generic songs. Uh, Reinstrumentations is an another playlist, so all the playlists on that channel get their own folder. Um, uh, then we also have a uh, Denshi Space program. This is a little bit more Marin. Got my uh, thumbnails for videos I'm still, you know, planning to make. Real time Mun mission, I'm working on that. Um, still have uh, images for the website for the space program and uh, like uh, stuff like this. So, you know, like uh, assets and such. I'll quickly show you how I have my OBS stuff set up. I believe if I create a new instance of OBS, here we go, this, this is OBS that I'm recording with OBS, that's kind of a, an OBS-ception, so we've got OBS recording and it's recording OBS, but um, this is OBS, and um, the way I have it set up is I have a screen recording mode for, for you know, just, in the, it's recording the entire screen, everything on it, specific recording for basically I can just select like a window, so I can go here, I don't know, this is the plasma, if I want to select, I don't know. OBS, for example, it's going to record my OBS window in it, uh, and I can also add more windows, so I can only record specific windows if I need only a, like a certain window recording, and I don't want to record, you know, the entire desktop. A black screen, just black screen, that's basically all it is, and I have two audio waves. I have audio wave and audio wave auxiliary. The way these work is that I have uh, an audio spectrum, this is a spectralizer, I made a video on that, and um, I, have, I, I haven't actually shown this in the latest videos on the channel, but I have, uh, well, I added a thing where it scrolls, because it looks cool, and fancy, and cool. Um, so was, I added like a filters on it, you can go here and uh, click on filters, I got a crop, a scaling aspect ratio, so it actually looks good, and a scroll. So as you can see, it scrolls, and, and it looks pretty cool. I got album art for like the song that I need to do. I haven't actually made that modular. You have to manually select the album art, but you know it's, it's still good. You can't just load a song and it works. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll get that working. The reason I have two is because I have one that's consistently only for the virtual singer covers because that's gonna keep on going for a while. Then I have a second one dedicated to just random music that's just inconsistent and not specific. So I can just have, you know, just this setup. I just need two so I can, you know, have the memory of one and then the memory of another one. So I can switch between the two. These are different, completely independent, like, things. The only thing that remains the same between these two different setups is the media source because you're not going to be recording two songs at once. So you only really need one song between the two. So that's why I have it set up that way. So that's my OBS setup. I also use Tuna as a plugin to show the album art, although um, it's not really, like, a, I haven't set it up yet, so it's not really working. I don't really have anything special in terms of DaVinci Resolve stuff, like, I don't really set it up in a different way, neither with Krita or GIMP, because uh, you can't, I mean, you can kind of customize things and move them around, but I, I, I just keep it to the stock, just in case I need to reinstall stuff, and uh, I don't, uh, I mean, I guess that, that applies to the desktop environment as well. I modified that, but uh, that has to be reinstalled at some point, but, yeah, uh, I don't really modify things in those programs. Uh, that's pretty much my entire setup. I'll just show the final step of making a Denshi video. After after I render everything in DaVinci Resolve, what I need to do is I have this little a special text file called Scripts. So what I do is I would go to DaVinci Resolve, and I would render my video, and then it would, it would go to my desktop as render.mov. And these are some scripts, uh, I think it's, uh, there's like a site you can download, like you can copy and paste this from. I modified them a little bit so they would, uh, you know, um, encode my videos better. But basically what I do is, because DaVinci Resolve is kind of stupid on Linux, what it does is that it can only, like, uh, encode uh, stuff into uncompressed editing formats. And it can only decode video that's in uncompressed editing formats. So any video I need to work with, I need to first of all, rename it to input.mp4, or rename it here, then run this command in the same uh, directory as where the video is and to encode so basically once I'm done with the video it will come up as render.mov on my desktop and then I would open up my terminal and I would go CD maybe not capital letters but CD desktop right and then I would run this script over here so I'd copy and paste this and obviously it doesn't do anything because there is no render.mov as you can see render.mov no such file or directory but if there was what it would do is it would basically encode it would encode um, the video and compress it, so then I can upload it to YouTube, because uploading raw editing format video to YouTube is probably not a good idea, because it would probably take like the ha like half a day, basically. It's, it's, I'm talking like, at some point, like I think my Pippi review, that was around almost 40 gigabytes in size. It, it was huge, it was like undoubtedly large. Um, so anyway, um, 
I actually, once I'm done uncompressing them, uncompressing the, the stuff, I put them, I basically, I have a, um, I have a, a drive over here named Alex Disk, where basically what I do is I keep, um, well, I, act, I have a quick link to it here, where it gives you, it, it brings you to, um, then she output the folder, which is basically this folder where I put every single finished video that I make. I have three folders, these are just random videos I made for other people, so this is like videos I made for other people. I have three folders over here. One's Denshi Space Program, all my Denshi Space Program videos. Other one is Denshi Song, all my Denshi Song videos, so they're all there. Denshi Video videos, so these are every single Denshi Video video. Not all of these are actually up, not because I haven't uploaded them yet, but because I haven't actually, you know, I've decided to take them down or something, but yeah, I have the Denshi Video folder. So once it's done, once I've finished doing that script thing I talked about before, I just move the video to here and I have Mega set up. So basically what it does is it backs this entire folder, Denshi Output, to the mega, so I can just, uh, if I actually, if for some reason, I lose my data, I always have that mega backup, although I, this is a local backup, so I have, like, a local backup as well of all this stuff, so I don't actually have to, you know, worry about losing stuff, but it's, it's important to back things up in multiple locations. Um, as a final thing, I'll go over through, like, my icon pack that I use and the theme that I use. Um, I'll just show you my theme. I use, um, uh, Lion, it's called, uh, Lion, or Lian, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Lion. Uh, I don't know. I, I use that as a theme and as an icon icon pack. I use something called Tela Tela Blue. It's really really good because I really like the color blue and it's really bright and colorful. And I like things that are bright and colorful, like this audio spectrum over here. That that looks pretty cool. Don't know why this keeps showing up though. Uh, I, that's never happened before. I'll, I'll fix that later. Probably because I'm recording or something. Every single other icon pack I, I don't really care for. Like Breeze, it look there's too many gradients. It's ugly. Tela Blue, I like it because it's, it's flat. It's nice and it's 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 just generally visually appealing, so that's the icon pack that I use. Uh, besides that, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it in terms of Denshi workflow. I don't really do much else. I mean, I recently added LibreOffice to my little makeshift doc over here, simply because I wanted to start writing more scripts, and I, I will write more scripts eventually to make my videos more interesting. But tech videos, especially when it comes to, like, tutorial stuff, works better naturally, so scripts aren't really required for that kind of stuff. I'll only really make scripts for things that require it, although I've gone pretty much on a stupid tangent and started talking about scripts instead of talking about what I'm supposed to be talking about, which is not our sponsor. It's, um, you know, my setup and how I actually use my computer to make videos. So if you want actual tutorials on how to make videos, I already made a 40 minute long video explaining all of it, including how to set up DaVinci Resolve on Debian based uh, distros. You can actually easily install DaVinci Resolve in Manjaro by doing a PAMAC install DaVinci Resolve and like I forgot the name specifically so I'm gonna use yay instead which is a package manager DaVinci Resolve and it will search for it and we'll find those results and that's it. Um, yeah, it's it's a very good very 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 good uh, software I really recommend it. It's uh, it's it's uh, you know, it's I really hope they update it so you know, you can actually import uncompressed, sorry, you can import compressed footage, which you can't do, like MP4s that are encoded in a certain way, like pretty much every MP4, MP3s as well, just does not like them. Compressed stuff, just no. Uh, DaVinci Resolve only really works with um, editing formats on Linux, although on Windows and Mac it just works without needing all this conversion and stuff, which is really annoying. I, j I just really wish they would fix that. Thanks for watching this video about me rambling on about DaVinci Resolve instead of actually showing you what I'm supposed to be showing you, um, I have a cool notification menu, if that means anything. Look at this, notification menu, got all my notifications there. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.